everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So one of the biggest questions I get from clients and people online is, should I be eating back the calories I burn in my workout? And the answer is, it depends on your goal. If your goal is to gain weight, yes. If your goal is anything else, 99% of the time, no. So today we're gonna deep dive into why, and then I'm gonna show you a few examples of this in action. So let's jump on in. So the most common goal that I see from people is fat loss. And I wanna explain a little bit deeper about why I don't think that you should be eating back your calories if you have a goal of fat loss. Number one, oh, I'm not even wearing mine. <laughs> okay, let's put mine on. So number one, these things, are incredibly inaccurate. I've actually already talked about that in this video right up here, so definitely watch that if you wanna know more. But fitness trackers have been proven to be up to 93% inaccurate. Inaccurate. That is a ridiculous percentage. So if you're basing what you're consuming off of a number that can be up to 93% inaccurate, you're more than likely gonna set yourself up for failure. Number two, you really don't burn as much energy as you think during a workout than compared to the rest of your day. Now, if you're an athlete and you're training for hours upon hours a day, for weeks and weeks at a time, your goal is gonna be obviously different than somebody else, and you, yes, should probably be consuming a lot of the calories that you're burning back. But again, athletes probably don't have a fat loss goal, they probably have more of a performance goal. The average person is not training like an athlete. The average person is working out a handful of times a week, sitting at a desk for most of their day, hopefully getting in a walk here or there, but like, that's it. Now, whenever I make vague statements like this, I always have people in the comments like, Look, you can't disagree with me that we are very sedentary as a society. Even me, I have what most people would consider to be an active job, but I find myself sitting right here most of my Monday through Friday. So if we're already taking a sedentary society where a lot of people have trouble even hitting 7,000 steps a day, and then you're taking the calories that you burned in your workout and eating that back, which is probably 200, 300 calories maybe, like it's not that much. You're not really doing yourself any favors, especially if you have a fat loss goal. Always remember that fat loss comes from being in a caloric deficit. And even if you just did a small workout, you just made one, which is awesome. But if you're taking those calories, which again, are probably not even tracked accurately and consistently consuming all of them back, you're just gonna hit neutral. So let's talk about what I would recommend instead. What I want you to do after a workout is eat your normal meal. So your normal meal that has carbs because you've just depleted them, it has protein to help with your muscle recovery. But don't look at your meal and go, ooh, my Fitbit says that I burned 384 calories, so I'm gonna add in to my meal 384 calories. No, just eat the normal meal first, then wait, sit back, assess your hunger cues, and if you're still hungry, then eat more. But don't automatically be adding those things back in without taking a second and listening to what your body is telling you first. So we are gonna put this to the test, kind of. So I, I already stated that like these things are very inaccurate, but I do just wanna take you through three different workouts or pieces of movement and show you exactly what my Fitbit tracks as burned, and then just talk a little bit more about, in that specific scenario, what I would do with that information. Most of the time, I do absolutely nothing with it. But I really just wanna show you like how little it is, what the difference is between different types of movement and exercise. And if any of this is a little confusing to you, you can always check out this video right here, where I do talk a little bit more about cardio and total daily energy expenditure in more detail. But definitely wait till we're done with this video to hop into that one. But anyway, let's go into the future and see some workouts. Hello, good morning, Zoe. Sorry, there's so many noises happening some morning. The Roomba in the kitchen, but we're gonna do three different workouts today. So we're gonna do a strength workout, we're gonna do a cardio workout, and we're going to go for a walk. So I'm gonna show you the calorie difference that's reported via my Fitbit. Oh my God, please be charged. Oh my God, my <laughs> phone. I'm gonna show you what it reports. Again, remember these are not accurate, but I just wanna show you the difference between each type of exercise and show you, A, it's not that much, and then B, you're gonna be surprised what like burns more. So let's go do a strength workout. Let's talk about strength training in regards to calorie burn. It's not gonna do that much. So the strength training will burn less calories in the moment, but honestly, it's a better bang for your buck long term. Remember that muscle requires more energy or calories to maintain. So with more muscle on your body, you'll burn more calories at rest. 
So this is a great way to get a faster metabolism, as people commonly say. And obviously there's a lot of other benefits to strength training as well. It helps prevent injuries, it protects your bones, and it also just makes you look fierce as hell. Whew, okay, let's... So it was like just about 45 minutes, including the warm up and cool down. 117 calories. We're gonna talk about that in a sec. My heart rate was pretty low the whole time because that's what you want with strength training. The only time it did get higher in there was during the lateral lunge to a balance. So anytime like you're using one leg and then balancing and you're gonna get your heart rate a little bit higher because your body has to work harder. So again, if, if the goal in this workout is to like build a lot of muscle, no, you're probably, you're not gonna do something like that. But that's also not the way that I train. But I try to keep it as traditional strength training as possible. Okay, so 117 calories. That is like absolutely nothing. But again, this is not about burning as many calories as possible. This is about building more muscle or getting stronger in certain directions or getting certain muscles stronger to prevent injury. It's not about burning calories and it, really should never be when you're doing movement. Honestly, it's just silly because A, it's inaccurate, B, it's not efficient, because C, your body's going to adapt at some point. All right, we're gonna go for our walk. So let's start our exercise. Bam, let's do it. So for most people, I would classify walking more as your NEAT or your non-exercise activity thermogenesis rather than a formal workout. But there are some exceptions to this. Number one, walking might be really physically taxing on certain individuals. So it's then gonna be more strenuous and might be considered a workout. And number two, just because it's not a traditional workout doesn't mean it's not worthwhile. In my opinion, walking is the most underrated form of movement. It 100% can fall under the cardio category, which is great for your heart health, but it's also just gonna be a great piece of movement for your joints. Now, in regards to calorie burn, walking is going to burn more calories than you think. I'll leave this until like the big reveal after my walk, but all I want you to understand at this moment is that you do not need to go on long, brutal runs or spend an hour on the elliptical or do these insane HIIT workouts if your goal is to increase your energy expenditure, AKA burn more calories, unless you actually like doing those things, but just know you don't have to. I also just pet the cutest English bulldog, like the fattest, cutest English bulldog named Bruce in that shop. Because it's like a cafe and a dog cafe too. We really, really considered living in this neighborhood. Unfortunately, it is a lot of high rises right near the park. And it was just like, not even so much that they were all out of our price range, but a lot of them were just so small for us to be like working from home. So it is so nice over here though. Oh man, look at that sweat. Okay, that was a long ass walk. I stopped doing like the GPS thing, like when you like record it on here, because I was like afraid that my Fitbit was gonna die. We're gonna blur that out because I don't want you to know where I live. An hour walk, just under three miles. So you can see my heart rate got up a little bit higher. There were definitely like a few hills in there. 301 calories. So obviously I spent 15 extra minutes in this than the strength workout that I did, but it does burn more calories going for a walk. That doesn't mean that you should only be going on walks and it doesn't mean that you should only be doing strength training to get those benefits. Like we need to be doing a variety of everything, but we tend to get so stuck in like, this is the best thing to do and then this is the right thing to do. And I've said this so many times before, but like it's all gray. There's no black or white answers. Anyway, I'm hot, I'm exhausted. I was originally gonna go rollerblading as my cardio. The more I think about it, A, it's 97 degrees outside. B, I don't actually know or not if that's gonna be cardio and C, I'm unsupervised because Kevin is out of town and I don't wanna get a head injury while doing this. So we're gonna wait till Monday when I teach my dance cardio class, which I always get up in like the cardio heart rate zone. So we're just gonna wait for that and then we're gonna see the cardio in that one. Hi. We're gonna teach cardio. I, I'm not hungover, but I was at a wedding yesterday and I'm just like, 
Mm, I wish I didn't schedule this class, but it's fine. Now I have to like get myself situated and get my headphones set in. Okay, so we're gonna track what this cardio workout is. Now this is only 35 minutes, but like she gonna pack a punch. Fuck, I didn't bring in. Okay, I need props. I need to concentrate. I'm gonna start my exercise thing, goodbye. Diving into some cardio. Just also side note, enjoy like the ridiculousness of the class that I teach. Anyway, I've talked about cardio a lot in this video right here, so definitely take a look at that if you wanna learn a little bit more. But the Cliff Notes version, cardio is essential for your heart health, but it is not efficient for long-term fat loss. It's simply not its purpose. And with cardio in terms of a calorie burn, you'll burn more calories in the moment than strength training but then you're done. Like the second you stop your cardio, your calorie burn is over. Whereas with strength training, you're burning more calories long after your workout because you're building and repairing and maintaining muscle. But again, just to be clear, cardio is still essential. You just don't have to kill yourself with it. I always recommend people find something that they actually enjoy for their cardio. For me, it's dancing and walking. You literally could not pay me to go for a run. Well, it kind of just depends on how much. Hi. Okay, I'm so weird today. I'm just very tired. I look insane, so we're going to keep this short. 40 minutes, 14 minutes in the cardio. We burned 235 calories. That's actually way that is actually way more than I thought. Hey, Laura. See you in class tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, so that's actually a lot more than I thought. Um, but again, remember with all of this, it's not about calories. Remember again, like I'm going to say this after everything I say. It's not about how many calories you burn because it's not super efficient. This is not accurate. Also, like it's been proven. So don't take those numbers for for exactly what they are. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Bye. All right, guys, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions about this <laughs> or just like energy expenditure in general. It's actually pretty simple for the most part, but I know that diet culture and, and just marketing, like it all kind of gets scrambled up. So I'm always happy to answer any questions that you might have down in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any content and I'll see you in the next one.